Hello, this is History Shorts with the Artifactual Scholar. Today, I'll be talking about the Petticoat War, also known as the Peggy Eaton Affair. During Andrew Jackson's first term as president, from 1829 to 1833, a political scandal emerged that would radically alter the makeup of the presidential cabinet and change the course of presidential history. At the center of this scandal was Margaret O'Neill Timberlake Eaton, the wife of Jackson's Secretary of War, John Eaton. Peggy O'Neill's parents owned a popular Washington, D.C. boarding house and tavern, the Franklin House, that was frequented by many members of Congress and other political figures. Here, young Peggy developed an easy charm and outspokenness and was noted for her vivacity and beauty. One admirer described her well-rounded, voluptuous figure, peach pink complexion, large active eyes, and full sensuous lips ready to break into an engaging smile. By all accounts, she was a striking beauty. Naturally, men were attracted to her. In fact, before her 17th birthday, she had had at least two failed engagements. Then, in 1816, she met and married John Timberlake, a Navy purser. The newlyweds moved into a house across from her parents, and Peggy continued to tend bar at the tavern. In 1818, the Timberlakes met and befriended John Eaton, the widowed senator from Tennessee. When John Timberlake returned to sea, Peggy began spending more and more time with Senator Eaton, and soon gossips in Washington society claimed that she had become the senator's mistress. Then, in 1828, John Timberlake died while at sea, an apparent suicide. Some claimed it was despair from the shame of his wife's infidelities that led to his demise. In the early 19th century, it was considered scandalous for a woman to remarry within a year of her husband's death. Yet, by the end of the year, Peggy and John Eaton were engaged. They would marry on New Year's Day, 1829. Washington Wags would say that the senator had married his mistress, and the mistress of 11 others. Shortly thereafter, John was appointed by Andrew Jackson to be Secretary of War. Eaton had been a longtime political supporter of the new president, and Jackson rewarded him with a prime cabinet post. However, Eaton's appointment caused great consternation among the other cabinet members. Led by Floride Calhoun, the wife of Vice President John C. Calhoun, the wives of the cabinet members refused to socialize with Peggy Eaton. Because of the gossip and scandal surrounding Peggy, the Eatons were excluded from Washington society. The social stigma soon interfered with the politics of governance. Pressured by their wives, the cabinet rem members refused to have anything to do with John Eaton. The situation in the cabinet was becoming highly distracting. Eventually, the president intervened. Jackson, a widower whose own beloved wife Rachel had been subject to similar gossip mong mongering and scandal, passionately defended the Eatons. Despite Jackson's defense, the Eatons were still ostracized. Jackson viewed this defiance as an attack on his personal honor and grew increasingly angry at his cabinet. One member of the cabinet, however, did not shun the Eatons. Martin Van Buren, the Secretary of State and a widower, saw an opportunity to curry favor with Jackson and immediately paid a call on Mrs. Eaton. Accordingly, as Calhoun and others fell from favor, Van Buren rose in Jackson's opinion. Over the course of Jackson's first two years in office, the Peggy Eaton affair dominated Washington. The division in the cabinet grew so intrusive that much of the president's time was devoted to trying to force his advisors to comply with his attitude toward the Eatons. Finally, in the spring of 1831, Van Buren devised a way to end the social and political logjam. He convinced Jackson that the only way to escape the quagmire was to replace his cabinet. To facilitate that process, Van Buren offered to resign his office. By the end of April 1831, all of the cabinet members had been forced out. Because of his loyalty to, to the president and his apparent self-sacrifice, Van Buren became a Jackson favorite and, from 1833 to 1837, served as his vice president and political heir apparent. In 1837, Van Buren would follow Jackson as president. The Eaton scandal had a profound impact on American politics. It tore down the presidential aspirations of Calhoun and paved the way for Van Buren's rise to the White House. This has been History Shorts. Thanks for watching.